Hello, this is Bad Vibes. Today's stories are all about work, whether it's night shift, creepy employees, or bosses, or even the crazy customers. Please hit that like button if you enjoy, and sit back and relax. In my early 20s, I landed a receptionist job in a sales office at a manufacturing housing community. It was my first job after working in daycare and the food and drink industry. I was excited. I greeted potential buyers, set up appointments, and staged the spec homes with our stock of furniture and decorations. I worked with one other person in the office who was the salesman. When he was out of the office, I took potential buyers through our spec homes and gathered their information for a follow-up. I was working alone one day when a customer came into the office looking to potentially purchase his first home. I gathered some information from the young man and asked if he would like to look at our spec homes. As we walked down the sidewalk toward a row of spec homes, we chatted about various floor plans and finishes available. I knew the product information and had no trouble confidently answering his questions. He was friendly and reminded me of a classmate from high school that had played offense on the football team. I decided to show him the two home models that best fit his price range and desired floor plan. Since I shared most of the technical information during the first home tour, I gave him some space to freely look around the second home. We walked through the main living room and stopped in the doorway to one of the back bedrooms. He called out, Hey, what is this back here? And pointed to the corner of the room that I couldn't see from where I was standing. I knew these floor plans by heart, so I politely answered that it was a closet. In my mind, I was sarcastically thinking, Really? You don't know what a closet is? He chuckled and asked again, No, really, come here. What is this back here? I could tell from his tone that he was pressuring me to come see for myself. He motioned for me to come closer and take a look. His tone was friendly, but his request didn't make sense. So I paused. And in that split second, something shifted. Maybe it was the energy in the air, the hairs on the back of my neck standing straight up, or the way his eyes changed before me. I suddenly sensed the power dynamic had shifted. I did not feel safe. With all the lightheartedness I could muster, I repeated, Oh, it's the closet. Excuse me for a moment, I need to check something outside. I quickly made my way to the exit to the sidewalk and outside the house. I had no concrete reason for why I felt the overwhelming need to leave the house immediately. I didn't understand why my body sensed danger. I just knew I had to act quickly. Over the next few days, the young man came back to the office to meet with a salesman. He filled out various paperwork needed to purchase a home and live within the community. He dropped by several more times unannounced to check his application status. If I wasn't there, he would ask the salesman when I would work next. My coworker thought I had a not so secret admirer. I couldn't shake the overwhelming feeling that something wasn't right, so on the nights that I worked alone, I locked off his door. A few days later, corporate sent back the analysis of the young man's application and completed background check. He had been denied. The background check revealed multiple sexual assault convictions, and there it was. Crystal clear, undeniable 2020 hindsight. The salesman called the customer right away to let him know that his application had been denied and that we could not do anything further for him. A few days later, the young man decided to come back to the office one more time. When my coworker saw the young man's vehicle turn into the parking lot, he told me to go into the back room of the office where I would be out of sight. And just like the times before, the young man entered the office asking if I was working. This time he was met by a very angry six foot salesman with nothing to lose. I had never heard my coworker raise his voice before, but on that day, his voice shook the office walls. Needless to say, the young man never came back and I wasn't scheduled to work alone nearly as often. I work a graveyard shift as a security guard for a recycling yard. I had been on the site for two weeks, this being the second. Basically every hour I make rounds across the giant recycling yard covered in various precious metals that are broken down and sold. 
During my shift, I scan various checkpoints to ensure no one beside me is in the yard or facility. One of my other tasks is to go through some grassy bushy terrain and over a set of train tracks to take a photo of the warehouse far across. This is to ensure that it's safe and clear. I have to use a flashlight with 2K lumens so I can see all the way through pretty much the entire yard. Well just an hour and a half ago on my round, I went through the grass and over the train tracks. I took the picture of the warehouse and submitted it. All of a sudden I get this intense feeling that I'm being watched. My hairs on my neck stand up and I freeze. My flashlight is still pointing at the warehouse. I slowly turn around and pull my flashlight behind me. Kid you not, about 10 yards away I see a skinny, old, wrinkled white man with a large white beard sitting on a chair. He was looking directly at me. He had dirty jean overalls and what I think was a western style cowboy fedora. He was bare skin under the overalls. Now I'm a 6 foot, 220 pound man, but I screamed, fuck, at a pitch that was embarrassing. I accidentally dropped my flashlight out of shock. Mind you, there are thin, teeny metal shards literally everywhere on the ground. I can't see a damn thing now as the flashlight is facing away from my sight. All I hear is quick pace, shuffling, clanging of metal from footsteps quickly running towards me. Once the metal crunching footsteps were within 5 feet of me, I hear them quickly veer to my left and pass me. Within 3 or 4 seconds the metal clanging is gone, followed by a faraway sound of rustling bushes. I then grab my flashlight from the ground and point it to the sound. The man was gone, past the bushes to who knows where. I was shaking from adrenaline and fear. I managed to catch my breath and call several emergency contacts. When they arrived, the old man was long gone. I believe maybe he was just there to watch the active trains move across. I say this because the metal chair was facing the tracks. It's still there. I am now in the office, still terrified and alone. I have to finish my shift tonight and tomorrow do another 11 hour graveyard. I won't quit as I need the money. I just wanted to get this off my chest. This happened a handful of years ago. We had a transfer come on the team from another department within the company. He was nearly completely deaf, meaning he could hear really, really loud noises, but nothing else. He did quite well speaking out loud, and he read lips to understand what was being said to him. No big deal. It was an easy adjustment to make sure you faced him when talking to him, and talked one at a time. He was a decent team member in the beginning. But after a while, started making comments to me and the only other female on the team. Things like, why haven't you made the coffee yet? And just other stupid old school jokes that made fun of women. My role gave him instructions on customer requests and needs. He would often not follow my instructions and I would get calls from customers complaining. Often I had to let him know that he had to go back and fix the work so it matched the original request. Afterwards, he would storm into my office and yell at me, as if his inability to read and follow simple instructions was my fault. I got so tired of it and said, do your job right the first time and there wouldn't be complaints. This of course didn't go over well with him. He was angry and very unnerving. I got the feeling that it wasn't going to stop there. In the following weeks, he would intentionally block doorways I would be trying to go through. One time, I was in the other female worker's small office and he blocked the entire doorway. He stood there and smiled this creepy smile as if he was saying, what are you going to do about it? I refused to touch him to try to pass by him. The other lady kept looking at me like she was beyond uncomfortable too. It was like we read each other's minds and we kept having our own conversation about something work related and ignored him. After several minutes, he left. Another time, I had to go to the far back of the warehouse to organize some stuff in the room. I remember going in and thinking, okay, there are two cameras and they can see the main hallway, but not between the shelving units. I had an uneasy feeling that he would come back there. Sure enough, a few minutes later, he came barging into the room and came right at me. 
I had already been on high alert, so I quickly exited the door in the room and booked it back to where the rest of the team was. I pulled up the security cameras to see if he had a reason to be in there. Sure enough, he paced in the room for a few minutes after I bolted, and then he left. He clearly had no reason to be there that exact moment that I was in there. I shared this with a male coworker friend, and he said that he would go back with me to any of the spaces away from the main team areas. I had to get my work done, but I didn't trust that I could do it without this angry guy finding me. Anytime that we make comments about his anger or demeaning jokes, the managers would say, Oh, maybe he just doesn't understand because you talk too fast. I bet it was just a misunderstanding. As if having a disability means that you can also be a disgusting person. Not too long after that, I heard from another teammate that this angry guy had grabbed a female's upper thigh, literally right above her private area, squeezed and said, Does this make you uncomfortable? Then laughed. A few teammates witnessed it, but they didn't know what to do, as the other female worker froze up. I immediately went to HR and told them everything he had been doing to intimidate, belittle, trap, and of course the sexual harassment. He was fired the next day. When they escorted him out, he yelled, This is retaliation. HR asked me if I would make a comment, and all I could think was, it had to do with me standing my ground with him. I was so scared that I would see him show up unexpectedly. I told my family what he looked like, his tattoos, the car he drove, anything that would identify him since they never met him. I blocked him from every social media platform too. After he was let go, other females came forward and shared things that he had said or did to them too. They had told the managers but they were dismissed because the guy was deaf and he didn't want to deal with the lawsuits. As much as I hate what he did to my coworker, I'm grateful it gave us a final boost to get him fired. You were all enormously supportive of my last library creeper post. Working in the public lends itself to the endless strange encounters, so I'll keep posting as they roll in. We are about five minutes from closing the library tonight. Mondays are very slow in the summer. So at the five minutes to close, we are basically waiting for the clock to tick. All tasks are complete. You may get one or two stragglers in to pick up something on hold, but not often. It's generally very quiet. Not tonight. This man walks in and I say, We're just closing up. Can I help you? He hollers from the entryway. I'm looking for a book. Okay, if you come to my desk, I can help you. He brushes over and says, you close at 11, right? I've worked here over six years. We have never closed at 11. I tell him no and ask him if I can assist him. By this time, my two other coworkers are up front with me asking what was going on and who was shouting. He just continues to stare at me like I have multiple heads. I ask again, can I help you? He says he needs to use the phone and reaches for the death phone. Nope. I move it away and tell him he can use a public access phone in the lobby, but at this point, he only had three minutes to do so. He again reiterated, he knows that we close at 11. I again tell him absolutely not, we close at 8 p.m. By now, we are all thinking that this guy is going to be a hassle to evacuate from the building at 8 p.m. My coworker is waiting near the lobby, asking what we should do. Since I'm the person in charge, it's up to me to decide how to handle this. No pressure. I told her, I'll go with you and check the restrooms, close down the bookstore, and start shutting off the entryway and lobby lights. My other coworker, I direct to stay near the phone. This guy is just odd, and if things go south, we may need help in a hurry. We are all feeling on edge now. She and I lock up and turn off the lights. He, meanwhile, is scrolling through the public phone the call log, not making a call at all. It's just a random listing of numbers so I don't know what he expects to find there. I tell him that it's time to wrap it up and we need to close. He begins to head back into the library. Oh no. I'm pregnant and exhausted, ready to go home. He's not going to go back into the library. As loudly and assertively as I can say, we are closed now. You need to leave. He again tells me that we close at 11. 
I don't know if this man is on drugs or simply confused, but he needs to exit. My coworkers back me up and say that he needs to leave or we'll call the police. He finally relents and heads out the door. We pull everything closed after him and ensure it's locked. I look at my coworkers and say, no one leaves until he leaves the parking lot. They both readily agree. The last thing we need is him harassing us off the premises too. We wait and wait a good 10 minutes until he finally drives away. I don't know what this man's deal was, but I hope he won't become a regular library creeper. I'm a 25 year old female. I was probably 22 at the time. I used to work at Starbucks and there was a regular there. We'll call him John. John was old enough to be my dad probably in his 60s. I'd see him every day and we never really even made any small talk. I ended up transferring to a store down the street and I noticed John started coming in. I thought maybe he just frequent stores in the area, no big deal, until he started bringing me gifts out of nowhere. He gave me his old Bluetooth speaker, perfume, roses, a giant stuffed animal, etc. I hadn't seen John come in for a few days, to my surprise. I'm on a break and someone calls to tell me that he's asking for me. He hands me the straw hat with painted birds all over it and says, I just got back from Mexico, saw this hat and it reminded me of you so much and knew you had to have it. What the fuck? To top the cake, I graduated college while I was working there. John comes in probably a week later with a bunch of pizzas and congratulates me for my victory. I never told him or really made a big deal about it at work. This is a customer who I went from seeing every day for two years with minimal contact to absolute off the deep end love bombing coming out of literally thin air. This happened around 2019. I was 21, 22, young, dumb, naive. He would ambush me in front of my coworkers and customers, putting me in an extremely awkward situation. I never kept anything he gave me. I had a coworker who was a struggling single mother who happily accepted everything. Again, it was things like giant stuffed animals, perfume, a speaker, clothes, food, etc. I moved two weeks before the pandemic really hit in March 2020 and I haven't seen or heard from him since. I'm going to contact a few coworkers who know who he is and see if he still goes there. I'm a 23 year old female. I was working at a coffee shop about a month ago. I recently quit because of personal reasons as well as not feeling very safe there for good reason I guess. It was at a main strip at a beach and the owner is very willing to let anyone in and let them step all over her. Anyway, probably two months ago, a couple who had just gotten married, December 2019, started coming in every morning, grabbing coffee and chatting with me. This lasted about a week. She was foreign and such a joy. You could practically see light radiating off of her smile, just full of life. We followed each other on Instagram. I remember wondering why she was married to her husband he was awkward, quiet, and just seemed a little strange compared to her. Fast forward, my former boss texted me about a week ago, this long message with a link to a video about this girl and her husband and how they bought a house close to here and he ended up murdering her in their new home. This happened a few years ago and still rattles me when I think about it. For context, I am female and at the time, around 25 years old. I worked in an office of around 150 people. One day I received an email from a coworker, but didn't recognize his name. The email basically said something along the lines of, I'm sorry if I did something to offend you. Given the situation, if you prefer never to see me again, I understand and will avoid you in the kitchen. I was extremely perplexed as I had no idea who this guy was, but I must have done something to offend this person, right? I responded back, I'm sorry if I offended you. Sometimes I zone out and it can be perceived as me being rude, so I apologize. After this response, he started getting irate. 
basically denying my apology and acting all passive aggressive about it. I wish I kept the screenshot of these emails, but basically he was confusing the hell out of me with this misunderstanding. So I sent him a message suggesting we resolve this in person. Big mistake. He agrees to meet in the kitchen in the office. I go there and immediately see a tall, 30-ish year old guy who I'd seen around but had never met before. I explained to him that I apologize, but I truthfully have no idea who he is, have never met him before, and don't want any issues. What happens after makes me very concerned. His face flushed bright red and he looked visibly angry. He was stuttering and denying that I didn't know who he was, and then says, You've been staring at me for months. When you made eye contact with me, you gasped and ran away. I strongly denied this to him and told him that it was a mistake. He kept insisting that I had been staring at him for months and that he could see me doing it. Eventually I realized he couldn't see reason and decided to end the conversation. Upon reflection, I realized it's possible he thought I was staring at him because when you walk in the hallway next to the kitchen, there's this room with glass and at the end, a bunch of desks. His desk would have been right in line of sight if you're walking down the hallway and he had a funny sticker on his desk that I sometimes looked at, but this seems like a huge stretch. After the incident, a coworker pulls me aside and asks me why I'm talking to him. I explained the situation. She looked scared and told me last year he appeared in the office in a bathrobe, raving like a madman at people, and for some reason was not fired. Was I dealing with someone in the midst of psychosis? Was he dangerous? No clue, but I reported him as soon as possible to my manager, who took it serious enough to tell his manager. I don't think he works there anymore. Thankfully, I left the company two weeks later, but I was extra cautious not to go anywhere near this dude. So I'm going to tell you this story of a brief encounter I had with this man called Happy. That's the name he gave me. I'm sure it wasn't his real birth name, but it adds to the creepy ambience of the story. Even though it happened around 9 years ago, sometimes he still crosses my mind, especially on gloomy overcast days in LA, just like the day I met Happy. 2013, I'm working at a cannabis dispensary in Venice Beach, a block away from the boardwalk. A good 35% of my patrons were unhoused people. Occasionally, someone experiencing severe psychosis would try to come in, but if they were screaming or unintelligible, security would not let them in. If they had and presented the holy trinity of medical papers, ID, and cash, they were good to go. We had a compassion program where we would bag up a gram of shake left over from the bottom of jars and give them completely free, one person per day, to anyone who asked. Word about this spread quickly on the boardwalk. Generally, these people would be the nicest, most polite and considerate customers, even if they did smell a bit stinky and their money got pulled out of a sweaty sock. No one working there would bat an eye if someone came in smelling like they slept on the beach for a week next to a bottle of vodka, as long as they just calmly buy their weed and be on their way like any other customer. It was a foggy, chilly day around the holidays somewhere between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Someone called out, so I was the only person in the back butt tending. There was another employee at reception and a security guard at the front door. I'm alone in the back room. There are cameras, but no one is actively watching them. This guy walks in after being checked in the front. He's the only customer at the moment, and I swear the whole room gets colder as he walks in. He is wearing a very worn in, deeply faded, wrinkled, confirmed to his body, floor length leather duster jacket and a beaded up, wide brimmed leather cowboy hat. It looked like he had lived and slept in the same clothes for years. We do not allow hats, hoods, or sunglasses in the store, so I'm surprised security didn't make him take off his hat. This man was at least 6'5 and built like a boulder, not obese kind of large pick you up and toss you like a rag doll large. The stench that came off of him is unlike anything I've ever smelt before or since. It was beyond body odor, beyond piss or shit. It smelled like actual death. 
as if he had raw rotting carcasses tucked under his thick, long leather coat. I thought I had been hardened by plenty of nasty body stink before, but this was absolutely revolting far beyond anyone who hadn't showered lately or pissed their pants. I was trying not to inhale very deeply, and I say, Hi sir, I'm sorry, would you mind taking off your hat? Just store policy. Big customer service smile. What are you looking for today? He grins deeply. He's walking very slow, shuffling and dragging his feet. His voice sounds like he gargles with gravel, rough and wet, raw and angry. I don't take off my hat. At this point, I'm not trying to argue with this man about his hat either. Let's get him in and out. I glance down and he's not wearing shoes. The bit I could see from under his coat, one of his ankles is massively purple, black and swollen, melon sized. The bottom of his feet are bloody and tore up. I realize he's leaving a slight trail of blood as he drags his raggedy feet across the concrete floor of our shop. My first thought is how and why the fuck security let this guy come in. Second is, this guy is seriously injured and that is concerning as a human being. I'm making sure to keep the display shelf between me and the guy, but that's only about a foot space, like a bar. He gets to me and the stench gets stronger. I meekly but sincerely say, are you alright sir? His eyes flare at me, what do you care? And I'm like, welp, I tried, not my chair, not my problem. Great, what can I get you? He pulls up his sleeve to expose his forearm. It is covered in large round burns like from a cigar, some old, healed, and some fresh, pussy, and infected. It's not track marks, it's burns. He also has a jagged homemade stick looking and poke tattoo of a smiley face, a crooked circle, two lines for eyes, and a scribbled up curve for a smile. He points at his tattoo, Happy, my name is Happy. The rotting stick was so strong and I needed to breathe little gasps, the least possible. I walked all the way here from Pasadena. I'm like, well sir, that's a very long walk. Anyway, what are you looking for today? Just for you. His eyes are menacing. He is smeared with a layer of grime like he lives in the woods dirty. He doesn't look your average crust punk or disabled veteran you generally see living on the beach. It was hard to guess his age, but he wasn't very old or young, somewhere between 30 to 50. He looked like he dragged himself here from his log cabin. I of course had never seen this man before, once was more than enough to make him unforgettable. He keeps staring at me as I move far back as I can towards the wall, hopefully out of grasp if he lunged. I would need to walk out from beyond the case and around him to get to the security guard. I'm weighing my options. I decide to grab a bunch of compassion grams and then weigh out a one eighth and mark it down that I'd pay for it later. And he's still just leering at me, wheezing heavy, stinky breaths. We actually have a special day only for people who walk more than 10 miles to get here. This is all for you on the house. Thanks for stopping by. He accepts the bag but continues to stand there and just stare at me. Thank you, happy. It worked. He grunts gruttle noises that is not a word and slowly turns and shuffles back towards the door. At the door he turns back to me and says, I'll see you later. He finally walks out leaving plenty of a stench of death behind. Thank Annie and all of the gods I did not see happy later or ever again. When I asked security why the fuck they let him in, he said that he knows his bloody feet and said, Hey bro, you good? That looks like it hurts. Happy just stepped up into his face and threatened to choke his ass out, calling him the n-word. And since it was just him and a 22 year old, 130 pound girl, he was trying not to die tonight and figured hopefully Happy could just get some stuff and leave. He was watching the cameras in the back, ready to call the police and the owners if anything weird happened. Apparently we had different definitions of weird, but I understood his reaction and ultimately, we were all fine, just spooked and creeped out, and now needing to clean the blood off the floor with bleach and gloves, and text our boss that he owed us free weed about it. He agreed, and we all lived happily ever after.
I'm a 19 year old female. So to start out, I work as a cook at a restaurant. About two months ago, we got a new hire. I'll call him Kyle. One of my friends who also works there mentioned that he's a little odd. The first time he met her, he said, yeah, I'm a weirdo. She thought I was a bit random and yeah, weird. Anyways, he doesn't drive, so he gets rides to work. He will be there early, and instead of sitting in the lobby to wait for a shift to start, which everyone does typically when they're waiting, he kind of hovers in the back for an hour or more. That in itself isn't too bad, on the surface, right? Well, he's made a few comments that really just made me feel a bit odd. I was pushing a cart around the corner, and politely said, Excuse me, as I moved past him, in a higher pitched voice, he goes, hit me, run me over, please, and then laughs. I was just like, uh, okay then. Now he does this all the time and makes comments like that every time I come around the corner. Or he comes into my area in the back, he looks at me and makes a soft quack or weird noise. I don't even know how to describe it. It's very odd. Recently, I saw him do sort of a tap tap gesture to one of our coworkers arm. And then when the coworker asked him what he was doing, he said, shanking you. The other day, he was scraping a tool and was sort of slicing the air and looked at me and said, I'm cutting someone or something like that. I didn't even know how to respond to that. So I just turned and walked away. He just makes me so uncomfortable and he will constantly do things and hover or just stare when I'm doing my job. It's not all directed at me but I haven't seen him quacking at anyone else. I mentioned this guy's behavior to my GM and he thinks it's odd, but hasn't done anything about it really. It's a whole nother story, but I don't think my GM will do much since about three weeks ago, he called me drunk asking me to be a sugar baby. So he clearly doesn't care much about professional boundaries or comfort in the workplace. But yeah, that's my creepy encounter. This isn't super creepy or terrifying, and probably, unfortunately, pretty common for most women. But this was my first encounter like this, and it really stuck with me, so I thought I would share. When I was 18 or 19, I worked at a cashier at a grocery store. I was not by any means super attractive. I'm a girl. I was short, a little chubby, plain looking, had acne, had fuzzy hair, and never wore makeup. I also have bad social anxiety and come off very socially awkward. I don't say this to fish for compliments, just to say that I don't think this guy really was attracted to me and didn't care about boundaries. I really believe the reason he messed with me is because he could see that I was shy and got off on intimidating me. Anyway, one day I was working ringing up customers as usual when a man, probably in his 60s, came behind my register and put his arm around me laying his hand on my hip. He then put his mouth right next to my ear and asked me very quietly if we sold sunglasses. I froze. I couldn't move for a few seconds. I was so uncomfortable and felt so violated. Somehow I was able to call my manager and ask if she knew where the sunglasses were. I was so relieved when she told him to follow her and he did. I thought that this would be the last I'd seen of him, but unfortunately it was not. He came in at least three more times, always waited in my line, and while he never came behind the register again, he would constantly tell me how beautiful I was and how he loved my hair, or whatever creepy random thing he decided to say that day. Thankfully, I don't work there anymore and I have not seen him since. Anyway, not the most dramatic story, but at 18 and very socially anxious, it scared me bad. Whoever this guy is, I hope he has a terrible day and maybe steps on a Lego. I'm a female with 17 at this time. I got a job at the beginning of the year. It lasted six months and this experience was near the end. To start off, I would walk home in the dark right out the back door because there was a stretch of asphalt, a small hill and then a sidewalk path leading into my neighborhood nearby. Even though it was a five minute walk and through a neighborhood, my mom got me some maize 
in case of emergency for when I was walking home. Out the back door, there was a small nook before a small road on the edge. You had to walk forward and to the right to get to the dumpster and there was a teeny parking lot in the nook to the left. It was closing shift for me and another male co-worker. I had a good relationship with him and we considered ourselves friends. As I got time to take out the trash and clean the place, my co-worker started on the dishes while I took out the trash. We had quite a few bags so I had to take multiple trips. I go out the back door and see a car. I'm really bad with car names and it was sort of far away so I'm not sure what kind of car it was and I think the car was a lighter color. The car was driving very close to the little hill at the end of the asphalt and as I watched the car stops and the headlights go off. I think to myself, well that's not great, better keep an eye out. I go back inside for the next load of trash and when I come out the car has gone from the edge of the road to the furthest parking lot stall to the left, much much closer, lights still off. This is when I knew it was not good, so as soon as I finished throwing the bags into the dumpster and I've gotten close to the door, I announce loudly that I'm getting my maze. I grab my mace from my purse inside and then I go to my coworker and ask if he'll walk me out to the trash because of the creepy car. So we open the back door, my mace in my hand. The car is now nowhere to be seen. I apologize to my coworker and tell him what happened and he believes me and still helps me out with the trash. When we're done cleaning and ready to go home, he offers to drive me home. And I declined and asked if he'll walk me to the sidewalk, stating that I have my mace for a reason and I will use it if I have to. I get home just fine. After that, I never took out the trash without bringing my mace with me. I even remember warning another female co-worker that if she'd taken out the trash, she could borrow my mace. I'm pretty sure me announcing that I'm getting my mace is what saved me. I'm a 25 year old female. This happened at my previous job and was 98% of the reason why I quit. When I told my friends I wanted to quit because of our annoying manager, male, 30, Ken, and what he did, many of my friends insisted that he was creepy instead of annoying based on the following series of encounters. Encounter 1. Ken liked to make process checking calls at around 2 a.m. I was in a profession where working overtime was pretty much a standard. We would work till 3 or 4 in the morning, or sometimes even overnight. So him calling me at this time was not completely out of the blue. However, a lot of times he called, they were only simple questions that I could have easily answered over Microsoft Teams. The call would still last over an hour, as he was gossiping or just rambling about non-work related things amid the call. One actual call started by Ken. I'm calling you about. Wait, no. Let's gossip first. Do you know Manager X hates colleague Y? Most often, it's usually just me and him on the call, not the whole team. My friend said it seemed like Ken wanted to chit-chat with me rather than check my progress. Encounter 2 We report to managers on project basis. So when a project with Ken finally finished, I just want to be as far away from him as possible. Managers have designated desks while seniors and associates do not, and hence can sit in any unoccupied desk. I deliberately chose the furthest seat away from Ken every day. Our office has restrooms on either end of the office, 21,000 square feet floor plan. One is near Ken's seat and one is near my chosen seat. Ken would always choose to go to the restroom near my seat and talk to me every time he passed by. My friend who sat next to me counted that Ken went to the restroom as much as four times an hour. Again, my friend suggested that was creepy. Episode 3 Our firm has frequent learning and development events. Most are mandatory unless you have to meet a client or are on leave. Many times during those events, which I did not attend, my friends would tell me that Ken kept asking where I was. I started to feel as if he was weird at this point. Episode 4 I joined the firm right after graduation while Ken worked in other firms in the same industry before switching here. 
So naturally, I knew more people in the firm, and more people knew me than him. A lot of people told me that Ken struck up conversations with them. He would name drop me, like, do you know OP? I know her too. And they all believed it was weird that my name came up in their conversations so often. I sometimes worried that people would think that we had more than a professional relationship because he always name dropped me. Fortunately, they only thought Ken was weird. I had planned on quitting even before I knew episodes 3 and 4 were happening. So I'm glad I got out of there almost 6 months ago. This happened about 10 years ago. I worked at a restaurant downtown. We were open from 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. and our customer base was mainly drunk folks looking for some food. At that point in time, we were the only place open downtown in a college university town. Most nights during the week was locals coming in for food. Weekends were a mix of locals and students. I grew up in this town and spent a lot of time downtown as a teen and young adult. We had a lot of homeless in the town and a lot of mentally ill folks that would hang out downtown. The types of ones screaming to the sky or having breakdown episodes in public. So I was familiar with a lot of them. We had a few that would stop by my work often and I'd either give them some food and a drink or they would ask to do some work in exchange for food. I was brought up to treat everyone with kindness unless they were complete buttheads. Combine that with being a freak myself, I have a soft spot for anyone that isn't deemed as normal. So needless to say, I was familiar with all of them, either personally or just seeing them around often. Throughout the years, I would often go out of my way to say hello, check up on them, learn their names, etc. Just to show them that someone cares and just seeing them smile and talk for a bit made them feel good and made me happy to know that a simple kind gesture can brighten someone's day. Anyways, weekend customers would come in waves. It was usually dead till around 9pm, then the first batch would come in. Usually ones that went too hard too early at the bars or shop owners closing for the night and grabbing some late dinner. It would usually start to pick up around midnight to 2 a.m. as bars closed at 2 a.m. and we closed at 3 a.m. or a little bit later. One night this woman comes in. We had a few groups of people standing around waiting for their orders. No seating at this fancy place. I was beside the cash register and I was putting sauces in those little small cup things. I heard the door and instantly I had this weird feeling of dread or something I don't know how to explain. I look up thinking my spidey senses were alerting me of a robbery or something and I just see this woman walking towards me. She is staring right into my eyes so intently it felt like she was staring into the back of my skull. I suck at explaining things or over explaining so sorry if it sounded dramatic. She was a heavier set woman, was wearing a long black skirt and a crop top thing that was very revealing. She had very dark circles around her eyes dark colored eyes and she was sort of bald and had some small patches of long brownish hair. When she walked up to the counter she smiled at me and said hi in this weird half raspy half baby voice. Her teeth were very discolored half missing some jagged or broken looking. I immediately felt bad for her because there were people staring at her laughing and whispering. She definitely did not look normal. I didn't recognize her and she definitely is someone I would have noticed around. I just smiled back and tried to act like I wasn't uncomfortable and asked what I could get for her. She asked for a hot dog, didn't even look at the menu. Keep in mind she's still staring into my skull at this point. I said sure and asked her what topping she would like. She said nothing, she just wanted a hot dog. I'm trying to be nice and friendly and I'm like, plain, yeah we can do that no problem. Should have mentioned it was obvious the restaurant was very bare minimum as in each order I write on a piece of paper and bring it into the one cook we have in the back. I guess my face going back looked spooked and the cook asked if I was good. I told him it was fine just a full mooner which was our code for the weird ass people we would always get on a full moon. I can't remember if it was a full moon 
but we could use that term generally to describe weirdos, which meant get this order out now to the cook. I went back to the front and she's standing in the same spot, but like staring at one of the groups of customers. They had their backs to her and would occasionally turn around to look at her and laugh and whisper stuff. I felt even worse for this lady and kind of felt bad for her staring at the other customers making them feel uncomfortable or just weirding them out. I asked the lady if she had any plans tonight. She turned around very slowly and said, No. I said, if she wasn't busy, I know a few pubs in the town that have live music going on and she should check it out if it was her thing. She smiled again at me and like held the smile. An image I can't get out of my damn head and she says, You're my friend. Not like a question, more like a statement. Immediately regretting talking to her again. Didn't even feel bad for her, just the uncomfortable and creepy feeling, trumping my other feelings. I nervously said, hey, I'm everyone's friend. And luckily at this point, the cook came out and brought the food. Another thing we had in this place with our full mooner code so that he could identify the person in case there was any troubles. I gave her a hot dog and told her it's on the house and I hope she had a good night. We don't give free food to any of the full mooners I can't even say I gave it to her to be nice, I was just very uncomfortable and hoped that she would go. Luckily she did. She took the hot dog, didn't say anything and just smiled and walked out. I felt instant relief but I also felt like an ass just thinking these things about her when she might have been suffering from a mental illness. The cook commented about her and was equally creeped out. I told him briefly about the weird encounter and he agreed that it was strange. So fast forward a few hours, typical night, normal shenanigans. It's closing time. The cook and I clean up and I lock up. The cook would typically walk with me about halfway, then go down the street to his house. The streets were basically dead come 3.30ish when we usually left, but if there were still a lot of people, he would walk me all the way home. This night, he was gonna sleep at his girlfriend's house and she lived around the corner in one of the apartments above the shop. I guess he could sense I was feeling weird still from the woman and asked if I wanted to come chill until the morning. I told him no I was good and I'm just going to speed walk home. My roommates were still partying anyways so if there was a problem I could call them. I really wasn't too worried. It was one person and she was probably long gone now. We didn't see her outside or around when we took our smoke breaks. Well I was wrong. I leave and start my journey north of the downtown area. Streets are dead, everything's closed, no one's out, lights are off, dead silence other than a couple of taxis. I got my head down, headphones in, power walking harder than Richard Simmons on a workout video. I had this weird feeling and immediately take my headphones off and look up. In the distance I could see a silhouette of a person in the middle of the street. I start to slow down and took my phone out. I get closer and realize it's the woman from earlier. I immediately get this fight or flight feeling and I'm like screw it and start basically jogging on the sidewalk getting ready to start running. I didn't take my eyes off of her. She raised her arm and pointed at me and was smiling that creepy smile. My brain's like uh nope. I just start running. Called one of my roommates and told her to start walking towards the downtown now. I ran about two blocks before I saw him and started walking and dying inside because I haven't reached Mach 3 turbo speed since I was a little girl before I discovered the joy of cigarettes. I finally look back and I can't see her. She is out of view. I fill my roommate in on what just happened that night. We grew up together hanging out downtown too and from my description of her, he said he never seen her around. Next day at work, I was thinking knowing my luck, she was going to come in again. She didn't. My other roommate was bar hopping that night and waited around for me so we could walk home together. Didn't run into her and never saw the woman again. I described her to the old hippie dude who would frequent downtown and play guitar outside of restaurants. He also said he had never seen a woman like that. So fast forward 10 years and I'm living in a different country. Can't get this woman out of my head. I told a few people throughout the years. Most just agreed that she was probably suffering from mental illness. 
Others have said that she's a witch and bamboozled me for some free food. And one person asked if I was on acid. For the record, no. Figured this was probably a good subreddit for this one.